Thank you. Hello, friends. My name is Monty Paulson. I lead the Passive House team at RDH Building Science. I am deeply welcomed, uh, deeply honored to welcome each and every one of you to this house happy hour hosted by Passive House Accelerator. This is an inclusive gathering. We welcome people from all Passive House communities in all nations, as well as everyone else working to create zero emissions buildings with far less embodied carbon. So please turn on your cameras. We want to see your face. Please turn on your microphones. We want to hear your voice. Please join me in raising a glass, whatever time frame you're in, and let's toast to the thousands of Chinese families already living in past house apartments. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Chin chin. Now, please mute your mics. Close that other app you've got open because we're gonna learn about past house projects from the other side of the Pacific Ocean tonight. First up is a short video tour of the first Passfaust co-housing project in New Zealand. And then after a few announcements, Wei Kuang of the Passfaust Institute is gonna tell us about a fascinating Passfaust project in China. Now please allow me to introduce my co-host, Prudence Ferrer. Hey everyone, I'm Prudence and Monty, you are very welcome. You're always welcome here. Um, I laid the Passive House practice for Morrison Hirschfield's 22 offices across North America. And if you're joining us for the first time, welcome to the 19th Global Passive House Happy Hour. Um, as Monty mentioned, we're a friendly, inclusive bunch, uh, albeit sometimes very passionately opinionated. And although that can sometimes lead to debate, we actively cultivate a respectful environment where no one is ostracized or silenced for their opinion. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed, but last week as part of the ever increasingly sensationalist seeming news cycle that's our current reality, there was mention of mounting tensions between China and the US due to COVID related finger pointing being aimed towards China by the current US administration. Currently, US citizens are advised against any travel to China under threat of detainment. And in pre-COVID times, prior to non-uniform secret police being tested first in DC protests and now in Portland, these kinds of tensions between uh, the planet's two greatest superpowers would have been front and center, but last week just got buried. Tonight, as we hear about projects happening in China, I'd like to invite us all to be grateful for this inclusive passive house community that was born out of COVID isolation, but allows us to share inspiration, challenges, mistakes, lessons learned globally, whether we work on PHI, FIAS, or other kinds of low carbon projects, and allows us to work together on a grassroots level to make positive impact no matter what's happening politically in our part of the world. So thank you all sincerely for being here and sharing. And as Monty mentioned, tonight's video is brought to us from Down Under in New Zealand uh, by eHouse, Stephen Williams, and Archetype. Uh, we're going to go on a tour with the um, the managing director of eHouse Otago. Um, he's going to take us on a mid-construction walk through 21 co-housing condos uh, with a future resident who's also a first-time home buyer. So come along. Hello, I'm Rob Cunningham. I'm Managing Director of eHouse Otago and Stevenson & Williams Limited. We're on the site of the first passive co-housing development in New Zealand. This is a 5,000 square metre site of the old High Street School. We're constructing 21 passive apartments here to eHouse Euro standard. We're here today to meet one of the future residents of the development, Jess. How do you do? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> Let's go and have a look around. Well, we're in your apartment now, Jess. It's starting to take shape and it's looking good. Uh, I'd just like to point out a few of the key features, uh, particularly the triple glazed windows and doors. Um, completely airtight, uh, high level of insulation value. Uh, we've also got uh, the start of the um, installation of the heat recovery uh, ventilation system, which is required because we do have an airtight uh, interior here. You can open windows windows at any stage, but when they're closed we are airtight and that's been uh, proven. Uh, you will notice the walls are somewhat thicker because they are from a 165mm SIP panel 
that uh, was used in this construction and um, this is now getting ready for stopping and finishing and I'm um, looking forward to uh, getting you in, in it and uh, to enjoy the lifestyle of uh, passive uh, homes. The thing I'm looking forward to most about living in my new passive house would be being warm and that being in every room in the house, not just in one place where the heat pump is. So for us that's going to be a really big lifestyle change and that's going to be such a huge change from the way we live now. Uh, I'm also looking forward to living somewhere that's insulated so that the heating costs is kept to a minimum and is living somewhere where ventilation is throughout the whole house and it's fresh air and it's healthy air and that will be really important for our children and our family as we grow. To know that we're going to be living here in the future feels amazing. It's really exciting for us to be moving into a new home, especially because we're first home buyers. So for this to be our entry into the market is something beyond we ever thought would be possible and we're really looking forward to coming in here. Well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, visit through your new home. It's been a pleasure to show you. Um, future work ahead is uh, the completion of the roof on the Elva block, and then we'll have the windows in and commence exterior cladding. And very soon we're starting some major groundworks here to get underway with the landscaping. And uh, we're still aiming at completion in November this year. So it's nice to show you around. Thank hope you. to see you again soon. Right, awesome. So uh, this is the part of the segment where we're all gonna time warp into smaller breakout rooms of five to six people. Um, it's gonna be a rapid fire style, three minutes of quick introduction. So just state your name, what you do, and what brought you here today just to kick things off. And um, give me a few seconds and we'll get settled quickly. The first thing is we have four great uh, passive house and building science virtual socials this week. Uh, with the BS Plus Beer Show kicking off this Thursday on July 23rd at 3 p.m. Um, the second big thing on the item is that there's a Passive House walkthrough. It's a virtual tour of a Brooklyn Brownstone Passive House retrofit um, with none, none other than Passive House Accelerator's own Michael Ingui, so be sure to check that one out. Uh, the third item on the list is the NAPHN conference. Uh, that's this Wednesday on July 29th, and we have a discount code for that. Um, the last conference on the list is a New Gravity Housing Conference on uh, Wednesday, August 5th to Friday, August 7th. It's a three-day conference, so be sure to check that out. Um, last but not least, I just want to quickly thank our sponsors. Without them, none of this is possible. Um, so that's Mitsubishi Electric, Zola Windows, RDH Building Signs, and our recently signed on stakeholder partner with NYSERDA. Um, last but not least, uh, quick thanks to our patron sponsors, Morrison Hirschfield and 475 High, uh, high Performance Building Supply. Um, all right, so without further ado, Monty, um, can you introduce the man of the hour? I can. Thank you very much. So China is the future of Passive House. Four profit Chinese developers have constructed more Passive House in a single year than US and Canadians have built in total. And Wei Kuang is gonna tell you more about that in just a minute, but first I want you to look with me at how this happened. Three key policy pieces. Number one, clear policy. Uh, China is in the process of implementing building codes that look an awful lot like the NZEB codes in Europe or the STEP codes here in British Columbia. Um, as these new codes come into effect, China is using the PASFAUS standard as a training ground. This slide shows their ultra low energy building guidelines. And you'll see they look an awful lot like Passive House. Uh, China is using Passive House as a training ground in which hundreds of developers, thousands of professionals, and literally tens of thousands of tradespeople are learning to build high performance buildings. Tool number two, a next generation supply chain. Uh, these are 73 of, there are now more, PASFAS certified windows from China in addition to cooling equipment, ventilation equipment, so many other pieces of supply. 
Hundreds of firms are making insulation, windows, mechanical equipment that meets or exceeds the pass file standard. Most of this is higher quality than typical North American building products. And tool number three, China embraces repetition, whereas North American cities literally make it impossible to construct the same building twice within city limits, Chinese projects recognize inherent cost advantages of elegant repetition. Uh, the developer of these high-rise projects is looking at deals to repeat this project in India and the Middle East. Now, here's the thing. By no coincidence, these are exactly the same tools that have helped PASFAS grow here in Vancouver and in Brussels and in other places around the world. Clear policy, next generation supply chain in particular. And this is the thing I'm begging you to see. Passive House is the same in China as it is in Europe and North America, and people are the same. China is not some weird foreign place. It doesn't need to be thought of as scary. We are the same. The leverage is the same. The tools are the same. And when we come together in community and make sensible policies, Passive House can grow. So for a look at our collective future, let's listen to Wei Kuang to show us more detail about what our future might look like and what China's future looks like today. Okay, <laughs> I guess it's my turn right now. Thank you, Monty. Uh, let me share my uh, PowerPoint. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, thanks for uh, Monty for the intro, uh, uh, in introducing. And uh, I think uh, as uh, extension for the report uh, re for the report earlier that uh, I did with my colleagues together. Uh, I will share some more information for some Chinese pro projects with you uh, here tonight, and maybe um, for a little bit of information. If you miss our report uh, earlier today, please kindly check the review of our sharing uh, uh, to to get some more information. Okay, for those who might not have might have missed the report uh, earlier, I would go very quick to tell about our cooperation with Chinese partners. Uh, in the last two years, we have a very intensive communication with our Chinese partners, uh, like the Ministry of Housing and Urban Rural Development or China Academic of Building Research or different uh, local design institute. Uh, so to say, um, as well as uh, manufacturers and uh, laboratories or developers. And uh, we offer, Wait. sorry. Maybe you change to presenter mode with your PowerPoint. Yeah, you see the present mode. I, th I think it's only for me. Uh, no, no, it's different. We ha you have the other, the other, um, we see that your your personal mode. Ah, okay. Maybe so, you have to change. Okay, sorry, sorry for that. <laughs> no, uh, I, I mean, it's no. normal right now for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Carry on. Okay, okay. So yeah. you don't see the notes. Yeah, no. sorry. It's only no. for, my, for me myself. Okay, thank yep. you. Okay, I will go on. Sorry for that <laughs> inconvenience. No. Uh, so, as mentioned, we, by the business trip there in China, we visited the projects and the construction site and discussed with the partners for some technical issues. And you may all know that uh, last year we uh, held this uh, International Passive House Conference in Gaobei Dian. And Earlier uh, in April, I was involved in an online discussion held by China Academy of Building Research for the Zero Energy Building, uh, that, which Monty just mentioned a little bit. And here you can see the strategy of the building efficiency in building sector uh, for China. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, China Academy of Building Research published the near, nearly zero energy building standard with the projects uh, you can see from the right side, the picture that in two, 2015, yeah, with the project's passive house region with renewable energy, uh, we have already proved that passive house standard can be better as uh, nearly zero energy building. So for this connection and recognition, we keep communicating with our partners in China and try to persuade them to build more and more passive house. Okay, for the climate zone in China, 
according to Chinese standard, there are five climate zones in China, severe cold, cold, hot summer, cold winter, hot summer, warm winter, and temperate. The following six projects I will present to you, four of them locates in cold zone in north and two in hot uh, summer, cold winter zone in south. And uh, you may already know that we have also published our study for the passive house in different Chinese climate zones. And we have also other residential settlement under certification in South or in Southwest. Okay, for the first part, the three residential projects. Uh, Yes, the first one, I suppose you might be already familiar with this project, the largest passive house settlement developed by Longhu together with Orensunda group. And here are some figures uh, for the projects, yeah, including the total area and there are 16 high rise uh, buildings. Uh, so highest for six, uh, 26 floors, about 80 meters high, and 14 multi-family buildings uh, with different floors, highs. And uh, uh, in the south, there are six villas and also uh, one kindergarten for of three floors high. And what we learn from this uh, projects as the first time for Passive House Institute to deal with such a large scale projects. Uh, we developed a workflow to certify it step by step. So to say we divide the prototype and so to call copy buildings according to the similarity of layout of building plan as well as the orientation and shading situation. We first check the prototype finish and then finish with copy buildings. The, uh, it's more efficient and to deal with the huge workload for certify this uh, large scale of settlement. Uh, on the facade, there are multi-layer of insulation for uh, aesthetic demand of, of the facade design from the architect. And the architect worked together with the consultant to figure out the detailed division of different part of different profile with the insulation materials. So they managed to reach a good construction control with this system. Uh, from the projects, we start to work with our partner for compact unit solution. I noticed this afternoon, uh, sorry, uh, that combi system was warm discussed in our, during our report earlier. Uh, here, I would like to show the difference between the design ideas and the implementation. In the left, you see that in the Passive House Museum in uh, Gaobeidian, which is also certified, that simply showed the um, kind of mock-up. And but. Uh, in the real scenario, right, what happened in the implementation for the apartment, the dark systems needs to be carefully planned and hide it then with the ceilings or decorations. So I think a further optimization will need to be happened. So uh, for the follow-ups for real uh, way city projects, the as far as we communicate uh, with the, sorry, uh, with the developer Long Fo, uh, at least they try to uh, build up their beam management for quality control according to the projects, which are partly already built. And also there are some studies for this uh, interoperable algorithmic modeling, so to call the EAM workflow with the project's data. Uh, we received one abstract for our conference this year for the multi-objective opti optimization on radiation uh, uniformity of a residential community. Okay, for the second residential uh, settlement in Qingdao Echo Park uh, that uh, my colleague Chiara shortly refers to it when she introduced the settlement north of it. Um, 
this settlement was developed by Frei Architect, uh, Architect. Uh, for this project, they are developer as well as architect. They have office in Germany and also in China and is a, a very close partner of PHI. Uh, here you can also check some figures for this project. It's com compared with a railway city project, it's uh, comparably uh, small with six high rise buildings uh, for two, uh, eight to nine floors and also one multi uh, fam family buildings for four floors is number seven and also with one kindergarten. And uh, by the early phase, they optimized the floor plan to make, uh, make the building geometry more uh, compact. Uh, so you can see from the left side is the typical floor plan for the residential apartment. And on the right side is the typical Chinese residential floor plan. The, this zigzag outskirt allows actually the natural lighting and the ventilation for all the rooms uh, with the very minimal uh, public area, but from the aspect of energy efficiency, it's very bad. And also our partner, Frei Architect, uh, they developed uh, the uh, the way, so to say, method to evaluate the summer bridge free solution for balcon uh, a balcony uh, slab. Yeah, they developed this uh, economical evaluation uh, study by cal uh, calculation the heat loss for different uh, variants. Uh, of solutions, as well as accordingly the incremental cost. In this slide, uh, you can see the table uh, for comparison of two, uh, three solutions. Um, the first one, the slab, you can see from the sections structurally interrupted away from the wall. So the insulation can run through and will be, there will be only punctual summer bridge. And the second one is the standard construction for the balcony slab and no with, without interruption. Um, and the third one is interrupted, but without insulation for the balcony slab. So with the consideration of the incremental cost, they choose the most economical solution for the uh, variant three. Also, they choose uh, the compact unit solution as the railway city projects. Uh, compared with what I just mentioned, uh, they use BIM tools or management easier for them to organize a duct system uh, in the small apartment. So it seems a little bit optimized in uh, this case. Okay. The third residential settlement uh, is the Tianjin Eco City. Uh, my colleague Beto uh, just uh, this afternoon shortly refers to it when he mentioned the ventilation system. Uh, this consultant is also a close partner with us. It's, soft, uh, it's called Softgrade Architect in Shanghai, uh, but it was founded by a German architect, uh, Rolf Demmler, and they involved in the project when the design phase was already finished. They offer some significant op optimization and help with the construction control with the design book. Uh, in the original design, there is winter garden uh, for the living unit, uh, but actually it's uh, very bad for the energy uh, efficiency. So they re revised the design uh, to enclose into the, uh, in, to enclose this um, winter garden to thermal envelope. And the thermal envelope has been reshaped yeah, to include the balcony area uh, as all year functional room. This potential weak point uh, was has been resolved. 
and with the thoroughly comp uh, comparison of alternatives of HVAC system, uh, it's more realistic to choose, sorry, to choose uh, a decentralized system as uh, what Beto presented this afternoon is uh, very common in China. Uh, but compared with other two settlements, the uh, combination to use of the combi, a combi unit, so to say the one box system, this project's develop accordingly, accord, according to the software grade, uh, tailor-made combination of uh, components with a ERV to provide ventilation with heat recovery and separate VRV for heating, cooling, and dehumidification integrated into the ventilation system. As mentioned, uh, SoftGrade also developed design books related to different key points for the quality control for passive house uh, construction that refers to owner, passive house institute, SoftGrade themselves, or local design institute, and uh, the general construction party. What's in common? When we see those three uh, settlements, the first thing that they do uh, in common is mock-up. Uh, just earlier, right from Railway City Project, it was taken by many developers in China to achieve a better quality control. Meanwhile, it's also, it's also very efficient for the developer to estimate the alternatives of incremental cost by choosing different components. And what's also in common is what we talked a, a little bit earlier about the kitchen issues. For the convention of Chinese cooking, it's quite, there's quite intensive use of the frying, uh, fry, frying <laughs> up to uh, three times per day. And it's grease and a lot of oil and smoke and smile. You can see from the picture between the German <laughs> cooking and the Chinese cooking. And, um, yeah, we're looking forward to the change as we discussed this uh, today uh, earlier when we uh, listened to the report. But however, currently we can offer a compromised kitchen hood solution with a, a airtight vent flips, automatic shutdown of the hood, and short uh, circuit inlet and exhaust, or in and insulation make up air from the room, or possibly. Uh, compensation from the HVAC system or directly from outside. Um, there, all, there are all uh, high-rise buildings in those three uh, settlements. So by blood test for railway city projects in 2018, we already faced the problem for high-rise buildings. Like take this one, for example, that time we discussed for this uh, uh, prototype for 60, uh, 26 floors, the building volume is about uh, 45,000 square meter, uh, cubic meter, sorry. And what we just, uh, we, we were asked by our Chinese partner, do we need to confirm firstly a test plan? And maybe we need to calculate how many ventilators will be needed. and how we can define the pressure difference uh, because it's quite high. And uh, this trickled this study based on the experience in Germany as well as uh, in the US. Uh, I also mentioned in the report earlier our communication with local institute for blow door test in our report. Uh, sorry, uh, I believe with more and more project, project uh, experience, that will be more and more optimizations and progress in this field. Okay, the second part, two kindergarten. The first kindergarten located in Peking, uh, it's called uh, or, 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 Oriental Montessori uh, Kindergarten. It was designed and consulted by Beijing Institute of Residential Building Design and Research Company. Uh, it's also a very close partner of a local design institute um, in Beijing. 
and uh, keeping in mind of the importance of building geometry, uh, the consultant team optimized the geometry in the early uh, design phase by working close with the design team in the same institute. You can see from the picture on the left hand and the right hand. And for the facade, uh, they use a steel frame curtain wall with alu pa uh, panels and uh, the exterior wall is a uh, uh, two, uh, 200 millimeter irritated concrete block plus 300 uh, millimeter mineral wall. Uh, and the thermal uh, conductivity is less than uh, 0 0.048. And after completion of the projects last year, and the kindergarten runs through the first winter season. Uh, they made a comparison of the operation cost of uh, a, a passive house kindergarten uh, with the uh, ordinary kindergarten. So they got this result, the annual operating cost of a passive house kindergarten uh, can be 25,000 uh, Chinese yuan per year lower. The second kindergarten in Lanchang, uh, Zhongsheng Kindergarten, which I also briefly uh, gave an overview uh, in the report uh, this afternoon. Uh, it was designed and consulted also by a uh, Frey architect, uh, as just mentioned, and locates in the warm summer, cold winter climate zone. And the design strategy diagram for the architect shows very clearly uh, this is a compact uh, building geometry compared with the last kindergarten. And since it's located in the warm summer and cold winter, uh, the facade uh, is uh, with light or cold color to reflect the sunlight. And also you can see in the south orientation, there are big windows to gain more heat in the winter with adjustable external sun shading. Here is the facade a section shows what just mentioned for the south uh, orient orientation. What's in common? Uh, in both projects, the window plays a very important role in the indoor quality for the children, uh, either for cold or warm uh, summer cold winter climate zone, a good passive house certified window is a must. Uh, by our report earlier, Battle showed the increasing tendency of certified windows, which help the realization of those uh, land residential projects. Sure, another thing in common is the ventilation co uh, uh, component. In both projects, uh, they're, they're use, uh, they, they use the, the uh, tenders unit, and by more uh, and more communication and cooperation, uh, there, we think there are more and more possibilities for measurement of different uh, heat pump ventilation system in Chinese uh, laboratories, which is, is essential for those line residential buildings. Okay, the last project, uh, I think you already saw from our report is one vernacular building renovation. Yeah, first of, uh, first of all, I would like to share a, a, a bit background information for uh, this project or this area. And for those of you might know the famous, international famous architect Rim Kuhas spent quite a long time, like about 10 years for a study about how important the countryside is. And this year in Guggenheim in New York, there's a exhibition for this study and quoted from Rem Kuhas to put the countryside on the agenda again. So how is then with China? I quoted here some information as well as projects examples for the country uh, re uh, revitalization. Uh, according to the diagram on the uh, left side, maybe you can see 
uh, to achieve that uh, urban countryside recirculation uh, rebuild uh, that socially and economically and one and often very often applied solution is the coastal industry in countryside which so just uh, benefit from the natural resource in the countryside this is so to say the background of and the mode develop a mode that how these projects appear and uh, designed and consulted by HXP is also a Germany, Germany rooted design and consultant company run by Chinese architects. They offer the consultancy for uh, railway city projects in Gaubadian as well. Uh, here you can see the layout of these projects. They really, uh, renovate this uh, vernacular building, enclose the whole building and separate the inside yard uh, out of the summer envelope that maybe you can see here. This is the yard. This is on the first of ground floor. And uh, this is quite different with the traditional design strategy to use the yard as a green space to connect inside and outside and in the but in the local, uh, uh, this in a location where this project is, there can means a disaster because with a warm, humid air constantly running through the building, that uh, is either comfortable or very uh, energy, uh, very high energy demand. Uh, here shows some uh, construction process. They apply the certified SIGA uh, air tightness products and also reconstructed the whole timber system. As Beto in the report mentioned for ventilation, they choose the certified INOVA product. One lesson that they learned on the left side, you can see the installation of the air dock in the floor but it shows it's quite not efficient. So they have also chances to correct it. For follow-ups of these uh, projects, they, their approach for passive house renovation for this vernacular building gained recognition and they're getting some more renovation assignments uh, in countryside. And uh, one of the architects, Sun Hui, will share the new experience in uh, our online conference in September. Okay, that's basically all the projects sh sharing. Uh, before I end up with the presentation, I would like to invite you to check our mid-year Passive House Open Day. Some of the our partners made a video about the projects I just show you. You can get more information by watching them. A small advertisement that we welcome you to join us for our online conference in September. And also submit your passive house projects and for the next year, the architecture award. Okay. That's all my presentation. Uh, we are on the way. I hope we can get more and more projects in China. Thank you. Ray, thank you very much. I've been uh, collecting all the questions. So if you have a sip of whatever beverage you have, um, we will get started with, I think good old Mark had a question to kick us off. Mark, you had a simple one about number of units. Do you recall that question, Mark? So um, <clears throat> my voice is gone, but uh, my awe is large. I really, I really enjoyed the scale of this project. How many, how many units are we talking uh, here? It was very impressive. So thank you for today. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm very bad at remembering uh, the numbers. Uh, I need to check it to answer that. You know, that's very large scale of the settlements. I, I can't say how many. Uh, I need to check it. Sorry. Uh, 
Sorry, that, why, why the that's comments. okay because numbers are not important in passive house. That's all right, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, my colleague Battle is also online. Battle, do you want to say something about that? Well, just for the Gaubidian railway city, this is about 3,000 un units uh, and each about 100 square meter about, yeah? So just to, to figure out this one settlement is about 3,000 apartments. So what was the total volume? Whoa, that's another hard question. <laughs> 300,000 square meters in the, in the Gaubit Yen. Well, and the others are more or less, uh, most of these neighborhoods, it's about 100 to 200,000 square meters. Oops. Sorry, excellent. Thanks, Mark, for the question. Thanks, Brynhold, for, for popping in there. Um, Bronwyn, you're up next. <laughs> um, yes, you did have a question. It, uh... I'm here. I'm trying to oh, figure out what it was. <laughs> you know what? Sorry. I, I copied your, uh, your Twitter thread because it was good. Sorry. Um, oh, no worries. Uh, it's, again, uh... it's a good one for people, so if you miss it, I'll, I'll put it at the very end. Uh, yeah, yeah tons, thanks, of pictures, tons of pictures of uh, everything in the conference and the expo. So dig in. It's uh, it's picture heavy. Not too much text. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> thanks. We'll thanks, come back John. to Brown. Uh, Lindsay Klein, you had a question about uh, the Zender that was in the slides. Sorry, just unmuting. No uh, yeah. So there's a Zender unit that was uh, designed for China. And the other thing I picked up on today was that the, the pref preference was to use individual units in each apartment. Is that correct overall? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, maybe uh, Battle can talk more about the sender, uh, sender unit because it's been, I think Battle told me before, it's been quite a while since Sender decided to develop a special unit for the Chinese market and to let it certify, right? Well, yes. And um, uh, Zender China is a, a, a single company for them, so a little bit separated from the from the other sender, and the development of the unit what we showed is really a special Chinese development. So they are a little bit struggling to come to get it out from China because uh, the uh, the codes what they have to um, get the allowance to get to US and so on, a little bit complicated, but I think they are going going there. Uh, what is special is uh, they really started and some other followed now to get it combined. So the ventilation with heat recovery and the heating and cooling stuff. And uh, um, to be honest, we are a little bit struggling with all the requirements for that. So to get it ready for uh, adopted and um, adjusted airflow. Um, and what Sichan this afternoon showed you, uh, the issue about uh, dehumidification. So the development in detail, it's going on, but there are some questions open. And well, as we said in this afternoon, we are really looking for other companies uh, to do, uh, to get the systems. Well, well, and one remark, um, the idea of having all apartment separated uh, is a very simple, has a very simple reason. All the developers in, in China, they want to sell out the apartments separately. And so every apartment has just a plug and play for electricity. And so each apartment has to have his individual air conditioning and ventilation system. So absolutely never you, you get centralized ventilation systems yeah, as they want to have it separated, all the apartments separated. Well, I was very intrigued because Tim McDonald did a presentation, what about four or five weeks ago in which he showed uh, his latest building also with individual units for individual market rate apartments. Yeah. I mean, 
the uh, Barrel Toll and others have been there much longer than I have, but in the short time I was there, it was explained to me that the preference for decentralized systems was a cultural preference by Chinese condo buyers, that their history of centralized systems dates back to a previous era with very old systems, government run, not always well maintained, so that it was more of a buyer interest in decentralization than a Passos criteria that drove those decisions. Correct me if that's wrong at all, Bertold or Way, but that was explained to me a couple of times. Yeah, also from my experience, I would say it's a lot, has a lot to do with maintenance aspects as well. So if you buy this apartment and you have your own single ventilation system, you can hire a guy to repair it. But if there's a central system, they, they, they always face problems that you have maintenance personnel, which is not able to work on such a complex system like the passive house uh, ventilation and which who d do not have the experience with such systems. So that's, that's uh, also what I was working on one of the Qingdao, the Qingdao projects um, uh, with Frei Architects. So uh, I got this little background. So we also, in the beginning, we, we for like, um, for, for um, what's the reason that we, we, were, we were also considering a central uh, system, but put it away very early in the, in the design process because we, uh, had, had the experience from this very first project in Qingda, which was this office building as a passive house, where we saw that this central uh, ventilation system needed a lot of training for the guys working on this system uh, in order to get it running the way we wanted it to work. Yeah. So when Thank you, Sven. <laughs> By the way, it's, it's quite surprised to see you here. Last time we see each other, it was in China, in Qingdao. <laughs> That's right, <an idea>. yeah. <laughs> and, and good time, Sven. You had a question earlier on, too, about uh, LED lights. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you had a question early on um, that you're asking about LED strip lights. Do you recall that question? No. No? Okay. Wait, in one of the uh, pictures, um, I'm not sure if you recall, but there are some LED lights in the ventilation that work. Is that, again, another added feature in no, that particular? No, no, it's for demonstration. Gotcha, it's, okay. Yeah, and then you show room for demonstration. Oh, that's from the music. Okay, gotcha, yeah. Well, but uh, by the way, uh, energy efficient lighting and LED lighting in apartments, it's a self-running a self job. They just do it. Yeah, you get, uh, you will not get old light bulbs in China. Well, and we'll uh, we'll try to track down the video of the museum from the NEPHN conference, maybe for next week, because it's it's really amazing that that museum. So, um, after Sven, by the way, just just, oh. a, just a hint about the museum. Somebody asked, uh, can we have this one uh, again? It's a it's again quite simple. This is a showroom for the developer to show people what's going on there. It's just like an advertising. So uh, if you want to go these apartments, this is Passive House Apartments, here you can see what is it, what it is, yeah? They need it, they really need it. And uh, by the way, the construction planning and construction cost uh, time, construction time was less than half a year. So they popped, popped up here. Just amazing stuff. Um, sorry, we, uh, Jeff X, you had a question about the uh, grease trap. Sorry, we're kind of flying through the list here. Yeah, Jeff. me with my constant cooking thing. Um, so, <laughs> so I, I was wondering about that because I, I, you know, wok cooking I do a lot of, and there's a lot of grease. So I've got a pretty strong food for that, um, but it ain't passive house. And I, we've talked about this before about recycling, and it ain't gonna work in recycling. So I was wondering how that was working. And so they've made a compromise apparently to accommodate the the the, um, the society, I guess, because of the cooking, right? I mean, it looked like it had it looked like it had um, like it had some sort of uh, intake air, and I guess the explanation was that it goes out, circulates out, right? So it's a totally separate system. And the bath, <laughs> Sean's cracking up. <laughs> it's a new kitten. She 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 misses her litter mate, so she's imprinting on somebody. She won't leave me alone. It's either that or she's walking on the computer and shutting me down. <laughs> Sean's losing it. <laughs> I'm trying to be serious here. Um, yeah, so that was my, my thoughts on the, um, I totally forgot she was there. Um, 
that was my thoughts on the cooking. And, 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 and are we going to be addressing this kind of thing? Because I'm getting, I'm already getting the questions from, from somebody. I kind of fell into this 104 unit development project that um, we may be able to convert over to a passive house system up here in a little town in, in New York. And um, this is one of the questions that I'm being asked by, by the, um, by the board, the planning board and a few other people. Um, so that's interesting the way they adjust this. Well, um, just a, a short hint about it. Um, Monty already explained a little bit about this uh, cooking hood. Uh, the point is, it's indeed a compromise what we what we showed there for, and and what we did in this uh, recent uh, Chinese apartments. And the point is, we have to get you have, we have to keep the grease out of the ventilation system. This would be. A, pro a real problem, yeah. So, but uh, we would um, recommend more to get a circulation system for a cooking hood, so not in out, but an internal circulation with filter, yeah. First of all, how do you deal with the grease in a situation like that? Because carbon carbon filters just destroy themselves inside of a couple of weeks. Yes, we know, and this this is the reason why we go for this compromise for in out. Well, and the idea is, if you go for PHPP and look what the uh, what's the impact of this in-out uh, ventilation uh, cooking hood, um, if you reduce the runtime of these um, air in, air out without heat recovery, uh, you can see that the impact is not so really heavy. Yeah, so you can accept it, and. Uh, um, so we just checked, uh, is the kitchen uh, best separated from the apartment? So maybe closing a door and so, and running, let the, the system run only in the kitchen. So no effect uh, to, uh, to the rest of the apartment. Well, and uh, it's, it's okay so far. It's not the best solution with the point of, from energetic uh, point of view, uh, but it's acceptable and well, if you have ideas to get it better, uh, you're welcome. Well, <laughs> so this is the reason for the for the door in the kitchen too. Then it's part yes. of it, Jeff, Jeffrey. There's been two approaches we've seen to getting the grease out. At, in addition to everything Bertolt just said, getting the grease out is the primary problem. There were several products on display in Gaubidian that had a very high velocity fan. With a, that would fling the grease away and usually place on an angle above the stove. The idea being to remove a lot of the grease through centrifugal force. Separately, there is a firm here in Vancouver, a dynamic HVAC supply that has been experimenting with a heavy lamb's wool filters as the first filter. The reason they use lamb's wool is that you can just throw it in the compost. It's just grease and lamb's wool recycled together. Uh, and so you would change this recyclable filter more often, thus protecting the more sophisticated filters further up the hood. I don't know which of these is a more effective um, solution, but I think it's worth noting that there are quite a few companies around the world who are working on this problem with different ideas coming forward. Uh, and we look forward to some way to kind of test or analyze what actually works. So the lamb's wool is going to require obviously a stronger motors and higher higher CFMs and all that to draw it through, right? Yeah, there, there's more pressure drop with the lamb's wool, but it keeps everything up, up above it clean. So the charcoal and other filtration is only filtering what they're supposed to fill. They're not clog, clogging up with grease. Charcoal wasn't really meant to collect grease. Right, exactly. Hey Jeff, let's hold on with the questions. We'll wrap up the happy hour and we'll dive into this in the after hour. Monty, go ahead. Actually, sorry, uh, sorry, Zach, you're going to show us next week's presenter. Well, Andy's sitting in for Zach, but yeah, sure. Uh -huh. uh, okay, here we go. So really excited to introduce uh, our next week's speaker, Bronwyn Barry. Uh, she's presenting Cycling Tours Industry Transformation, What's Next at North American Passfiles Network. Um, just a quick background, some top hits on Bronwyn Barry's uh, credentials. Um, she organized and directed California's first all-women construction crew for Habitat for Humanity. Uh, she founded Passive House California and the North American Passive House Network, where she currently sits as board president. Uh, basically, she's a rock star, and you definitely don't want to miss this next Wednesday.
All right, Monty. All right. All right. Well, thanks. I know we'll spend a lot more time in the after hours here, but I really want to thank um, everybody from PHI, but especially Wei for presenting these buildings and just invite each of us to kind of um, look at these buildings, think about the people living at them and realize that they are sorting through the exact same technical policy and supply chain questions that we are. They're just doing it faster. And special thanks to uh, Andrew Berthold and Sven for being online to help answer questions. We really appreciate it. We know that the hour is not great for you guys. So thank you. Yeah.